Hey there, and welcome to Flearn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me at flearn.com where we make learning fun. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create an awesome hologram effect in Photoshop. You can download this sample PSD as well as textures and image files on flearn.com for free. Just follow the link right down below so you can follow along. So I chose this photo because I wanted something that was relatively easy to cut out my subject and something that would kind of look like a hologram and with her pointed toes and her figure it just kind of already looks like a hologram figure. So that's going to be a big part in making this effect look cool. The first thing we're going to do is just duplicate our background layer. Hit Ctrl or Command J to duplicate that. Now we're going to right click on this and go to convert to smart object. You'll see it right here. We're going to be applying some filters to it. That's why we're converting it to a smart object to start. Now we're going to go ahead and select out our subject. So let's go to select and then down to subject. This is going to help us cut our subject out from the background. You can see our subject is selected, works really well. Now all we have to do is click right here on our layer mask icon. There we go. And it's going to go ahead and create a layer mask. So my subject is now cut out of the background. And if I make my background invisible, you can see that. Okay. What we want to do is make our background a lot darker. We want to make it look like she's in a dark room and the hologram is kind of lighting things up a little bit. So we're going to make a levels adjustment layer over our background and just make it a little bit darker. We're going to grab an adjustment layer and go over to our levels. There we go. And I'm going to take my light point here and we're just going to make this a bit darker. So I'm just going to click and drag from the right to the left. There we go. We can change this at any point in time, but you can see because my subject is cut out in front of this, it's just going to darken up the background. So now we want to go ahead and make our subject look like she's a hologram. And to do this, we're going to change our blend mode from normal to screen, and we're going to go ahead and colorize it. So let's start off with our blend mode. From normal, we're going to go over to screen. It's a hologram, so it should produce light. That's why we're making it a screen blend mode. Let's go ahead and colorize it. We're going to do that with an adjustment layer and go over to hue slash saturation. All right, now let's make sure this is clipped to my subject. I only want this to affect my subject, not the background. So we're going to go ahead and click on our clipping mask icon right here. You're going to see it's pushed our hue saturation over to the right, and we have this little arrow letting us know that it is in fact now a clipping mask. You can also right click and go to create or release clipping mask right here, and that's going to make sure it only affects the layer underneath it. Now let's go ahead and click on this colorize icon here. There we are, already looking pretty good, and we're going to bring up our saturation and just bring in a nice hologram looking color. All right, off to a pretty good start. The next thing I want to do is load a levels adjustment, and that's going to help me work on my lights as well as my darks. So let's go ahead and click on our subject. I'm going to grab a levels adjustment layer, and that's going to be clipped to my subject because I put it under the hue saturation. And we're going to go ahead and just work on our lights and our darks, making it look again just like it's glowing just a little bit more. So turn that off and on. We can see both of those subject looks normal. There's a before and the after. So now it's time to make our subject look like she's a projection. We're going to add a little bit of noise and we're going to blur it a little bit. So zooming in, let's go ahead and click right here on our subject. We're going to go to filter down here to noise and add noise. And you can choose as much or as little noise as you would like. You can change this at any time because we're applying this to our smart object. There we go. Let's hit OK. And you can see we've got our smart filter and add noise is right there. We're also going to give this a little bit of a blur because a projection shouldn't be perfectly in focus. So let's go to filter down here to blur and then we're going to go to Gaussian blur. There we go. And just a little bit of a blur. We don't have to go crazy with this. Something like that works really well. And then we'll want to do our layer mask as well. So let's go ahead and click on our layer mask. Again, we'll go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur, and just give your layer mask a little bit of a blur. Something like that looks great. I do have a little bit of a border around my subject here, as you can see. So I can click on my layer mask and go up here to select, and then down to select and mask. I'm going to change my view to on layers. And here in my global refinements, I'm just going to shift my edge in just a little bit. You can see you can push it out or in. That's going to help you take care of any little glowing edges you might have. We just want to make sure we pull that in just a little bit. Go ahead and make sure your output and your output settings are set to your layer mask. There we go. And hit OK. So this is looking really good. Now I want to bring in some like horizontal lines to make it look like it was kind of projected. And I went ahead and already created a texture for this. 
You guys can download this on Flurm for free. Just follow the link down below. It's just the easiest way to do this. So here's the texture effect. It's just a PSD with a bunch of lines in it. It's really easy to use. Basically just open up the PSD and then hold shift and click and drag from one image to another. And it's just gonna bring these lines in there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and bring those lines all the way up to the very top. And let's go ahead and group our subject with itself. So we have our subject here, the hologram effect. There we go. And we also have these lines. Now we can basically just make this texture larger or smaller to change how big or small the lines are. And then we're gonna use this on a layer mask. So let's hold control or command and hit T. And I'm gonna go over here and change my height. So we can just see, I can change my effect. So if you want, you know, small little lines, if you want big lines, you can kind of just, you know, dial this into whatever you want. And the texture is just gonna, yeah, work really well for this effect. So let's go ahead and click on that checkbox right up there. So this is basically just black lines at this point, but I wanted to define the visibility of my subject. So what we're gonna do is make it into a selection. Hold Control or Command and click right here on your layer. There we go. And you can see it went ahead and made it into a selection. Now I can make that invisible. It doesn't have to be visible anymore. In fact, we're done with it. What we're gonna do is go to this group that we just made. Remember this group just has our subject and our levels adjustment and our hue saturation. So let's go to this group that we made. And because I have a selection active of these horizontal lines, if I click on my layer mask, and it's gonna automatically load this selection into the layer mask. So let's go ahead and do it. Click here right on your layer mask icon. There we go. And we can see it brought that into the selection of our layer mask. So now those bl black horizontal lines that we had before are simply defining the visibility of my subject. So she's not gonna be visible basically where we had our, um, where we have our horizontal lines. Now I can still see a through a little bit to the image underneath it, but as far as our uh, subject is, a hologram is concerned, she's got these cool lines. Now it doesn't look that great with those lines so well defined. So we wanna add a little bit of a noise effect and we wanna go ahead and blur this. So let's go ahead and click on this layer mask. I'm gonna go to filter, down here to noise, and we're gonna go to add noise. There we go, just a little bit of an effect on that layer mask. And let's go ahead and blur it too. We'll zoom out and we'll go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. All right, so this is just gonna help me see like, you know, kind of where this effect comes together. And it's up to you as how much blur you'd like to do. Honestly, I think the more well-defined these lines are, it, it kind of looks a little bit uh, worse. So I'm gonna just make it like pretty blurry. So you can definitely tell that there's an effect there, but I don't want super clear, well-defined lines on there. There we go. Something like that I think is starting to look pretty good. You can always blur it more. There we go. All right, so that's starting to look pretty cool, right? We've got our effect, we've got these horizontal lines coming in there, but it doesn't look like it's light, right? We want it to like glow, we want it to have some projection, we really want it to like have a little bit more presence. So what we're gonna do is take everything that we've already made and we're going to duplicate it and merge it together and then add some glow to that. It's gonna help this effect really come together because right now it just looks like flat and kind of boring. So controller command J is gonna allow us to duplicate the entire group and now I'm gonna merge it with itself. So I'm gonna hit controller command E that merges it with itself and we're gonna right click on our layer mask and go to apply layer mask. Okay, so we have a subject copy here. This one's gonna be set to screen as well. And now basically all I have to do is start blurring this and we're gonna create a couple of copies here. So our first copy, let's go ahead and give a blur. So we're gonna to go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. We'll just do a little bit of a blur just outside my subject. There we go, something like that looks pretty good. Now we'll do it again. So controller command J and then blur it again. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we're gonna do a little bit more. There we go. And let's do it one more time. Controller command J and then Gaussian blur. And this time we'll just do a nice big blur there. All right, so we can see with our blur effects, we're really coming together and it's starting to actually look like our subject is, uh, in fact, a light source. Now, because these are set to screen blend mode, if I want to, I can go in here and change the light values of these. So if I hit controller command L, oh, bringing up my levels, I can make my darks a little bit darker 
And this is basically going to result in just the light areas being visible. So I can make the light areas glow more than the dark areas. All right, so we can see that there. We're going to do the same thing here. Controller Command L, bring up my darks a little bit more. And that's going to kind of just add like a little bit more interest to the image as a whole. There we go. Let's hit OK there. So all three of these, let's turn them all off. We've got one, two, and three. You can see the light areas of my subject are glowing a little bit more than the dark areas. And that's because we applied those levels adjustments directly to these layers. You know what, I'm gonna just do one more of these and then we'll just do a big blur on this. Why not? Fantastic. So let's go ahead and group all those together. Control or Command G to do that. And we've got our glow effect that's really bringing this hologram effect uh, just in general, I think it's looking much, much better. Now, I want to copy the same like lines through, you know, we have our lines through our subject. I want to copy those uh, onto our glow as well, but blur them a bit more. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option right here on the layer mask for my subject and click and drag it to my group. Okay, so now we can see those lines are affecting the glow as well. If I shift click this, you can see this is the before. And here's the after with the lines actually affecting the layer mask right there on the glow. Now I'm gonna hit controller command L right here on the layer mask itself. And I can make my brights a little bit brighter. And this is just gonna help them show up a little bit more. So I'm gonna still have those lines, but there we go. It's just gonna be a little bit more visible. There we go, that's cool. We can kind of just like custom tailor this in and figure out exactly how we want these lines to show up. And again, this is just using a levels adjustment right there on the layer mask. This looks really nice. So what I want to do next is just add a couple little glows here and there, and that's going to make it a little bit more random, make it look a little bit more like a projection. So we're going to create a new layer. I'm going to hit B for my brush tool, and I'm just going to hold Alt or Option and grab this color from my subject. There we go. Now I can just paint in different areas and then change my blend mode. We're going to use color dodge here and I can just kind of paint in some areas and, you know, add a little bit of glow to certain places. You know, I, it's not something that I want to just do a duplicate of. I, I kind of want to make this a little bit more random. There we go, kind of focusing on the light areas. I'm gonna focus here on the ground a little bit, make it kind of look like she's projected onto the ground. So this is why I'm using the brush tool to kind of paint this in. And that's kind of helping sell this effect of it being, you know, a little bit more random. It's gonna make it look less like a Photoshop effect and more like, you know, more like something that it would actually glow. There we go. That's looking pretty cool. Let's go ahead and make our brush just a little bit bigger and I'm gonna extend this onto the floor a little bit more. It's gonna just make it look like, uh, well, it's gonna hopefully make it look like we have a little bit of a glow right there on the floor. This is nice. I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna create a new layer and just bring this nice and large. I'm gonna change this from normal down to color dodge again. And we're just gonna go big, large brush here. Some nice extra glow. All right, if it doesn't look right, you can just erase part of it, but basically just a little bit more glow. Now, I think this is looking pretty dang cool already. Uh, we can just change the opacity of these, of these a little bit. One thing I want to do is add a little bit of a reflection right here under my subject. Reflections are really easy in Photoshop. Just take your subject that we already have. I'm going to hold Control or Command G to group those together. So this is my subject. Okay, now let's just rename that subject. There we go. Control or Command J to duplicate the subject. Now we're going to hit Control or Command T. I'm going to right click and flip this vertically and hit enter. All right, now I'm just gonna use my move tool and then just bring this all the way down to the very bottom. We don't have much of a reflection, but every little bit helps. And then we just bring down our opacity and there we go. We have a hologram with a reflection right underneath it. It's a super cool effect. You can see all of our lines makes it look like projection and all in all looking good. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget you can download this PSD as well as this texture on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. It's completely free. If you want to get more free Photoshop tutorials, click on our subscribe button right here on YouTube. We'll send them to you every single week. Thanks again. I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone.